My name's Colin Kelly Cook. This is Luna. Today we're going to be building this in a power platform canvas app. Remember to subscribe, buy me a coffee, I'll send you a link, you can download all the solution files. Let's do it. So I've set myself up a um, blank canvas app just using a blank template for now. And we're going to be doing this. So this is called Glass Morphism. Now, I just saw this pop up. It's probably been around for a while, but I was like, this looks pretty cool. I wonder if I could do that in a canvas app. That's what we're going to try and do today. Um, now, what I did find when I was building this is you can't do it purely with canvas apps. We need a little bit of HTML. I'm going to try and stick as much to pos as possible to just out of the box components with a tiny little bit of HTML just for some sharp edge. Um, I have also just turned on the mono controls just in case that looks different to everybody. If you pop into your settings, um, you can just turn those uh, straight on in here. Um, I just prefer to use them at the moment. It's entirely up to you. Again, it's not important for, for this video. Um, so the first thing you're going to do is just chuck a container in. It's pretty much what I start with all the time now. If um, if you don't know much about containers, there is a video on my channel. Go and give it a watch. I talk about all the different containers, how you can use them and what they do. Um, for this one, I'm just going to chuck in a vertical container. I'm just going to chuck it up to the top left. I'm going to set the width of it to the app.width, just because I want this to, to be the central container for everything. And then the height, I'm going to set to the app.height as well. I'm just going to drop the going to drop the um, shadow off of that and the, the rounded edges just because I want it to kind of in the front part of my um, screen. Um, now, firstly, just to start with, I'm going to chuck um, a black background on here just so we can see. Now, I'm using the screen for the background. So you'll notice here there's a fill. We can chuck a color in there and also use a background image, which is how we're going to do that cool wave effect, from which uh, you can see in the preview. Um, Let's get to building out the basic stuff first. So the first thing um, I'm going to do is just chuck another container in here. Um, this is going to be the frame in the middle that we're going to put all the pieces in. Now, in a normal scenario, I would just chuck another horizontal or vertical container in here. But because of the way we need to do some of the effects on this, I'm actually going to use just a normal container. If I just put a container in, now these containers don't automatically um, align everything top to bottom, left to right. And there's a reason why we need it because we're going to have to overlay two things. It's the only way I know to, to overlay two things so we can have them on top of each other. If we put them in a normal horizontal container, they're just going to fall on top of each other and we're not going to get what we need. Now this, um, this here I'm going to set to, it's not a flexible height, and we're going to set it to center and we're going to give it a specific width. We're just going to give it say 600 pixels. Uh, maybe about 400 pixels height for now. And I'm going to set the top level container to center. Now, just so I can show you what's happening, I am going to add the color to this. I'm going to add white. And I'm just going to drop the transparency. So this color is made up of uh, red, green, blue. And the last one is the transparency. So one means non-transparent, fully opaque. This I'm just going to set to 0.5. So you can see we can kind of see the background through this. Um, now what I'm going to do is again it just inside this um container now, I'm going to put another horizontal container, vertical container, sorry. And then this vertical container, again, I'm going to set it to the parent dot width. So the width of the container above it. And the parent dot height. So the height of the container above it, my x to zero, my y to zero. Cool. So now I've got a container inside a container. Now in a normal app, I would not do this. This is not necessary. Um, normally this app with this container would just set up here. But again, I want to underlay something in this. So let's just build this out a little bit more really quickly. So let's chuck some text in. Uh, we will expand that right out. Let's. Increase the font size maybe to like 32. Change the text to your details. And just set the height up a little bit to 45. And then we will just set that to call it semi bold white. Lovely. And then this container here, I'm just going to add some padding as well. So I like. Lots of padding around things, lots of space, lots of white space makes everything look 
nice and clean, easy to read. Now we're going to quickly chuck in another piece of text. So we're making a form here. Let's say we want someone to give us their name. And we're just going to stretch that right out. Probably leave it at 32. Bring this up to 28. Maybe that's too big. Let's drop it down to about 22. Get that to white. And ooh, semi bold that. And because we want someone to fill this out, we'll put an input in, nice little text input, put that right out to the edge. And let's just copy, let's just make this bigger, a little bit bigger, maybe up to about 40. Yep, lovely. Right, let's just copy this a couple of times. So name, let's say we do a job title, contact email, name, job, title, Contact email. Now we're not going to actually make any of this work. This is more about making it look snazzy. Um, so last thing on that, just want to give that a bit of a gap, just to spread it out a bit. Whoop, that might be a bit too much. Let's just put an A gap on that. Yeah, that'll do for now. Um, right, I'm just going to again get rid of any um, drop shadow on there, and I'm going to get rid of the border on that one because I don't want that to be controlling the radius or the borders that's all going to happen in this section here so we've almost got our app now there's two things missing from this that you will have seen from the preview there's that cool wave in the background the animated wave and there's the fact that this doesn't quite look the same so let's first deal with the wave now that is not a video that is actually just an animated SVG so I'm just using this site, SGV Waves, just something that I found on Google. It was actually uh, another developer friend of mine, Jordan, who sent it over. And I was like, I need to do something with this. This looks cool. Um, it's got some adjustables. We can adjust the height. We can adjust some layers. Let's actually turn it into a gradient. Add a few more layers into it. Yeah, I think we might change some colors. Um, right, so what we need to do is just generate the code for that, export it as an SVG. Now there's another video that I've done where I'll show you how we can get SVGs in as icons. This is exactly the same thing, except this has got animations in the SVG. It's gonna give us a whole bunch of code. So you can see in here, it's got width, height, got some colors, we've got some animations, everything we need. So we can copy that entire set of text. Now, if we jump back over to our app, to use SVGs, we just have to put them in an image component. Now, if you remember at the beginning of the video, we have a background image for our app. So we can actually just put the SVG in there. If we go into our background image, let's just expand this out. We can put our SVG in there. Now it won't work directly like this. You can see it's having issues with uh, double quotes, single quotes. Um, and actually it won't understand what this is. So the first thing that I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pop over to a Visual Studio Code window, which you can't see. And I am literally just going to find and replace all of my double quotes with single quotes. I'm gonna bring that back over, copy paste that in. So now you can see all of my double quotes replaced by single quotes, which means I can put this whole block of text into double quotes and it becomes a string but that won't work so it's not actually working yet and why is that that's because our image component needs to know what type of information is this it doesn't recognize it as an image file so there's something we need to pop in front let me just go and grab the code for that over here so just in front of this, and I'll move it to the top just so we can see it. I'm gonna say, this is a data, it's an image, and this is the type, it's an SVG file. And then I'm gonna add encode URL, which is a form um, formula. And I'm gonna add all of my text in. And lastly, I just need to drop to the bottom and I just need to close out that formula. So my entire SVG contents are inside this formula encode URL. I'm concatenating it this bit at the beginning which is saying this is the type of information it is so now 
boom, you can see we have a lovely animated SVG as a background image. No videos, no unnecessaries. Perfect. Now we can also go in, we can change some of the information in here. So we find the colors, find those. So here we've got stop color, so stop color and stop color. So we can change these two colors. I'm actually going to change those. Now I've got something over here. Let's just copy this over, drop that in. There we go. So you can see I've changed a couple of the colors, I'm it a bit more of a wave, and I'm just going to get it to fill. You've got a few options here. We've got center, stretch, tile. Now you could go and mess around with the uh, height and width over there, but I'm just going to get it to fill. I, I don't care if it's exact or not. We're almost there. I mean, this looks pretty good, right? So we've got our transparency, which you can see there. You see, it doesn't have that blur effect. Now, if we look at the glass morphism, you can see that there's like a blur effect that happens. So it's sort of anything behind it is blurred. And that is not an image. That is the component in front actually causing it to blur. Now on our component here, our container, we don't have a blur. There's, there's no blur. There's nothing we can put into the, the results to make it blur. So we're going to have to do it with a HTML element. And that's why I have this container. Because I'm going to insert a HTML element. Let's find it here, HTML text. And then for this again, I'm just going to set it to zero and zero. So I'm going to set it up to the top left. And then I am going to just move this to the back. We ought to move it to the back. So I want this to be behind all of the information that's in front. Uh, and then I'm going to set the width to the parent dot width. Now why that's halfway down there. Great work. Ah, there we go. Parent dot width and then the height to parent dot height. Nice. Parent dot height. So now that, that will fill the entire background. You can see it says here, show your HTML text here. So that's my HTML text. And what I want to do is I just want to put a div in there. That's the IV in HTML terms. That's just a, a DOM element, uh, an element of a HTML page that is going to cover that whole um, screen there. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to add some style elements to that. So here's one I prepared earlier. I'll just pull them over and we can talk through what we're seeing here. So if I bring this down, we can see I've got a div, I've given it a style properties, and then I've added the width, it's the parent dot width, the height is the parent dot height. I've taken two off just because otherwise it seems to push to the edge and be a little bit strange. Um, then the background, so here we've got white at 0 0.1. So that's the transparency level. That's at 0 0.1 on this one. Um, and then we've got a shadow, a box shadow as well at 0 0.1. And here we can see the blur. So this is actually setting a blur inside that HTML element. We can put it up, we can put it down. And then we've got a small little slither of a border that's white, just to give it that little crisp edge that gives it the look as well. It's going to look a bit weird at first. And why is that? Because I still have the background on my container that I first put in. So we're going to get rid of the color on that one completely. And right, so what's happening here? So we can see there's like a weird drop shadow on there. Need to make sure we've got rid of all our shadows, get rid of all our shadows, because the only thing that we want to be causing the background effect is this HTML text. So we want to get rid of it on all our containers. And it comes on by default, which is mildly annoying. Um, and then again, you see here, there's a scroll bar. So it thinks there's extra content inside something here. So you can see my div in there is just slightly bigger than the outside. So let's go into the HTML text. Let's just bring this up so we can see what's happening. Let's see if we can drop the width a little bit. Drop the height by about 40. There you go. So 
Uh, let's just give it like 25, 35, minus 15. Yeah, that'll do. We just have to drop the height there. I don't know if we have to drop the width. Yeah, we just need to drop the width a bit. So we can probably play around with the height and width to be a bit more on purpose, but it's just it was just pushing itself outside of the, the container. But there we go. So now um, oh, we've lost the gap on here. Let's just pick the gap back up. There we go. Let's make this a little bit bigger so that it's got more of a gap at the there. Check this height to 60. Maybe 80, 100. I could do this all day. Maybe too big. 80. Bring it back up to 80. Just push that back up to the top. Circle line top. Yeah, there we go. So there we go. So now we've got just with an SVG background image, pretty lightweight. An HTML element which is just um, sitting behind the card. So if we turn that off, turn the HTML text off, bump. still got all of our pieces. So those are just pure components. Turn it back on again, and we've got that blur effect. So we can go into the actual effect here. What happens if we add some more blur? So we can add like 40 to the blur, 40 much more blur on that now which gives it a bit more of effect i really like the 20 and if we wanted to for some of the effect we can bring up some of the background so you've got a bit more of a uh, frosted glass effect there but again i really like just that clean effect especially with the black i think it looks pretty cool and there you have it pretty cool looking app just needs a few more buttons maybe duplicate the screen you could reuse this component across and have multiple different pieces in the screen really simple really easy thanks for watching along really enjoyed building that one if you want to get access to the solution file remember check the description for the buy me a coffee link where you'll get access to my website you can download the solution files from today's video and all my future videos see you guys in the next one